would like to help you to avoid danger while traveling abroad. You are to see your health care provider or come and see us to find out what diseases you may encounter or you may be at risk for during travel. We will discuss things and ways to keep you healthy while traveling abroad. We also suggest that you schedule this visit four to six weeks prior to travel. And the reason for that is most immunizations take for two to four weeks, and then some anti-malaria drugs or typhoid meds might take uh, up to four months before they become eff uh, effective in terms of providing some immunity for you. Um, so therefore, we recommend that you give us more than a day. We've had students to come in and they're leaving the next day, and it's not really a lot we can do for them that's going to help them if they're going to only be traveling for no more than two to four weeks. So schedule your visits way ahead of time for us to determine the vaccines that you needed. And also we suggest that you visit your dentist and or your gynecologist for the females. There are things there that should be taken care of also. And if you have chronic medical problems, you need to find out what problems could possibly be exacerbated by the traveling, the foreign travel or problems exacerbated by the environment that you're going to be traveling in. So those things are important. Also, uh, problems that would require frequent medical attention. There are certain diseases that people have, such as asthma or sickle cell, or the need for certain medications that they get on a routine basis, and they need to know whether or not that's going to be a problem while traveling to whatever country that they're going to. And if there are any complicated medical problems, there are people with medical problems and they like to travel as well. We also suggest that you take along your medical records, prescription, prescriptions, and an extra pair of eyeglasses or extra contacts because it's not uncommon for parents to call and try to figure out how to get an extra pair of glasses to their child because perhaps they, they broke them or they didn't have enough contacts or whatever. And if you do have a medical problem requiring medications, uh, we ask that you take along a letter of introduction from your health care provider letting the medical professions know there that you do have problems that you will require some medical attention. Medications and their management, you need to find out, and we can help you do that, to find out if your prescription is legal and available in host countries. There are certain medications here that's not necessarily available in countries that you're traveling to, anti um, depression meds, uh, medications that help with ADD, ADHD, those are the ones that we tend to find the most problems with, but we get around it if we know in advance so we can help you to get the supplies that you need before traveling and while you're traveling. Certain medications we know we can only give you 30 days worth, but we can try to work with your insurance and your parents so your parents can mail those medications to you while you're there. Um, regular medications and contraception if you need them. Um, those are things that we ask that you take enough of. I tell people to transport medications in both their carry-on baggage as well as the baggage below, only because something could happen. Someone can take or you can forget and sit down your carry-on bag and it won't make it to your destination and then you would have a backup supply in your luggage below. Or if your luggage doesn't make it there with you, you would have the supply with you on the carry-on. Prepare an international travel traveler's kit. And we do have some we've made up in the clinic now. Um, and for the first 50 people who stop into student health service, they can get this $15 kit for $10, and it will contain some of the things that you will need, such as the uh, Benadryl, the ibuprofen, the Pepto-Bismol, the ointment, the Band-Aids, the anti-diarrhea meds, the hydrocortisone cream, and we suggest too that you, we're going to put in there hand sanitizer, just something to get you started for a few days at least, and you would have available, because you're going to always need something there. We also recommend that you take um, sunglasses, because if you're going to go to South Africa um, in December, January, it's going to be hot and it's going to be sunny. Vaccinations have an updated copy of your immunization record with you when you go in to see your health care provider or you come to see us. And if you're coming to the Student Health Service to get this information, vaccine, and a clearance, 
then you should go into our website and there is a travel section that you are to download and to complete before making that visit because if you don't go on and do that we won't be able to help you and it would be a waste of your time because there's nothing that we can do for you until you get that uh, completed form and come prepared with your immunization record. Most of you guys have received the basic ones but we need to make sure that those basic required ones are up to date. The TET test diphtheria has been changed. It's no longer just a TD. You need what's called a TDAP, and that came out a few years ago. So make sure you come with those records at hand. Know where your exact itiner know where you are going to be going and your exact itinerary to determine the immunizations needed. You know, some countries such as Ghana will need smallpox. Some countries such as Thailand will need typhoid. Um, so those are things that we need to know and in order for us to know you have to come prepared with your itinerary. Know if you're going to be going into some endemic area where you may get uh, the dengue fever or something like that. And as I said too, know if you're going to be going into a malaria endemic region. And people do get malaria. Some of the dangers traveling abroad, bugs, sun, food, water, sex, and drugs. But uh, bug-borne illnesses, they're real. You uh, have diseases that are transmitted by ticks and mosquitoes, such as the dengue fever and malaria. You are to, if you can, wear long sleeves and pants, uh, use insect repellent that contains DEET, Avoid outdoor activity at dawn and dusk, and I know that's impossible, but at least you can be aware of um, mosquitoes during that time. Use malaria prevention if needed. And as I said before, there are several different anti-malaria drugs. Some countries uh, requ require certain anti-malarias, uh, malaria drugs, because some of the mosquitoes are resistant to some of the other ones, like chloroquine or doxycycline or uh, mefloquine. They're all different in all the regions of the world, so we need to know exactly where you're going so we can give you the anti-malaria treatment that's gonna be specific to the area that you're going to. Some you can take once a week, some you have to take every day. So those are things that we try to find out for you. Sun. Use sunscreen, avoid uh, dehydration by being adequately hydrated. And I would say also, uh, while traveling in the air in general, try not to drink too much alcohol because that tends to dehydrate you and you're gonna run into a lot of problems while traveling on the, on the plane because you're gonna already be dehydrated from just flying for eight hours or 12 hours or however many hours that you're gonna be flying. So hydrate well with non-caffeinated beverages, food, you boil it, cook it, peel it, or you forget it. Because the food, you're gonna see some pretty good looking food on the streets by vendors. But those well presented fruit platters or whatever, they're usually not, um, they're usually contaminated. I fell for it too. I was in Thailand, the food looked good, and it was my last day, so I thought I would grab it, get on the bus, head to the, to the airport. I was so sick on that airplane trying to get home with diarrhea because they don't have any place really to wash their instruments, you know. If you look, they don't have anything around them, so they usually wash their utensils in the, the water that's on the ground there near them, so you have to be really careful. Avoid food cleaned in water. Avoid unpasteurized milk and dairy products. Beverages, canned or bottled carbonated beverages, Beverages made with boiled water are treated with iodine or chlorine, and I always say avoid the ice as well because it's coming from the water. Sex and drugs. Risk of unsafe sex travels abroad with you. So whatever precautions you would take at home, you would take it over there too. Diseases, unintended pregnancies, social and emotional consequences, and um, HIV is much higher in some parts of the world than in the U.S. It's very high in South Africa. I saw HIV clinics and HIV um, people, and it's real, so you have to be most careful. Also, um, irresponsible sexual behavior have been shown to increase while people are traveling abroad. Some people think that what happens abroad stays abroad as they won't see them again after they return home, but that's not necessarily so. 
I always tell people that chlamydia travels, um, gonorrhea travels, HIV travels. There are many reasons why it's just plain foolish to buy, sell, take, or smuggle illegal drugs while abroad. Selling <clears throat> prescription drugs are not exempt. Some local police can be corrupt and in collusion with the dealers. So be very careful, otherwise you won't make it back home. And let's see. I also tell young um, people traveling to, <coughs> while traveling on the plane, you're gonna be traveling on this plane for eight to 20 something hours, depending upon where you're going. Be aware that you're gonna be immobile. So you have the risk of developing what we call deep vein thrombosis. I'm sure you heard about uh, Serena Williams who developed one. She flew from the East Coast to the West Coast and when she got to the West Coast home, she was really sick and she didn't know what was going on. And someone was astute enough to get her in and they saved her life because women on contraception or any forms of hormones or other medications, uh, you have a greater risk of developing deep vein thrombosis. That's when the blood just kind of pools in the legs. So therefore, I recommend highly that you get up and you walk around and you do leg exercise while sitting because that way you prevent the stagnation or the pooling of the blood that will create or put you more at risk for deep vein thrombosis. Okay, so we also tell you to keep your parents informed, and I told the parents that they should have a valid ID, and pa not ID, but passport, and if necessary, visas, in case they have to get to you in a hurry. And um, I have some useful websites that's up here and on here that perhaps would be helpful while you're traveling. And then I always tell people too, traveling expands the mind, but it loosens the bowels. Diarrhea is real, and <laughs> we see it all the time. So if you have diarrhea, just uh, use precaution. Eat bland foods while you're there, you know, the rice, the bananas, and something real simple, and hydrate well. About four ounces of water every hour, that's about a cup. Um, and then if it continues, uh, when you come to us, you're gonna get some anti-diarrhea. Uh, medications such as antibiotics that you would take for prolonged diarrhea or bloody stools while you're traveling abroad. So you might have to resort to using that. And then if you come back and you continue to have the diarrhea, perhaps you have a parasite or you have something going on that needs to be cultured and treated appropriately. So when you return, if you're having problems, make sure you stop into the clinic as well. Any questions? No questions. Well, I have questions for you guys. Uh, I have a little trivia on international traveling. Are you up for it? Okay. What is the number one international travel destination for U.S. residents? The number one. Just think about where you like going on spring break. Mexico. That's right. <laughs> and then it's Car the, Car the Caribbean, Canada, Europe, and then the other countries. So what do you think is among the leading cause of deaths and disability while traveling abroad for U.S. citizens? Come on, you guys, think, think, wake up. Malaria? No. Mm -mm. Car injuries, yeah, injuries. And out of 100,000 U.S. citizens traveling to developing countries in one month, how many will die? I know it sounds morbid, but it happens. <laughs> so out of that 100,000 traveling every month, you're gonna have 50,000 who's gonna get sick, and out of the 50,000, one will die each month. So be aware of those statistics.